and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and as you saw from our introduction, we're going to talk about the Garden Club and how you can grow your garden. But before we begin, I have a few housekeeping things that I need to take care of. We are not live this evening, so please do not call because nobody will be here to answer your phone. But you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. If you have a question for me, suggestion for a future topic, or if you just forget the um, email for my guests, you can always email me and I'd be happy to forward it. Um, I would like to thank the crew for this evening. John Vias is pitching in tonight because we are not on our regular evening. So thank you, John. And we have a full crew this evening. Um, we have some Boy Scouts here that are earning their merit badge for movie making. So they are our crew for this evening, and John walked them through everything. So I would like to thank Evan McNamee, Sam Ruiz, Evan Peckham, and Noah Donahue for taking time out of their schedules to come down to BCAT and learn about movie making or videography or a little bit of everything. So, and as always, I want to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for daddy date night. Almost forgot that. Um, because we do still have one child at home, even though the other one's here. So, housekeeping aside, I would like you to introduce, like to introduce you to my wonderful guests, Suzanne Raposo, who is the co-president of mm -hmm. the Burlington Garden Club, and Heidi Mover, who is the conservation chair of the Burlington Garden Garden Club. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Love the purple shirts. <laughs> purple is our color. You see a purple purple people down on the common. It'll be you know, us. I think the Girl Scouts are going through like a purple people thing <laughs> lately. So anyway, I digress. Um, thank you for coming. It's springtime is finally coming around. Heidi brought yes. in these beautiful flowers. Um, okay, we have forsythias and those like um, crab Az apple? Azalea. Az oh, those are azalea. Oh, okay. Already blooming. And soon to be li uh, lilacs. I've never tried forcing a lilac from that small. I don't know how it will do, but mm. that's oh, the fun of it. Oh, you mean they can actually it. bloom from this? Uh, you think? Those, both of those other flowers can be forced. Right now they are growing outside, but you can force them. Cool. I didn't know that. Well, anyway, before we get into the topic mm -hmm. of gardening and the garden club and all the wonderful things that you do to make our world more colorful, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourselves? You guys get to decide who goes first. Um, where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, and what made you decide to get into gardening? I'll let you go first, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah. um, I've, I've lived in Burlington for about 30 years now. Um, I went through a phase when I was living in New Hampshire, and I thought it would be really cool to kind of farm a little, have a little farmlet and grow all my own food. And it was so much work. <laughs> so that's really ambitious. <laughs> and it was a really long drive to get to the work where you got a paycheck. So oh, okay. we moved to Burlington where my husband was working. And um, we do have a, a fairly nice sized garden. And mm -hmm. we, we don't grow all of our food. I mean, really. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you eat what you yeah. grow. OK. We, we grow an, enough of it. We grow the things that are hard to get at the store. Okay. Um, I like trying out different things and, mm, and okay. sort of experimenting. I'm kind of a mad scientist, and, <laughs> and I have a lot of fun with it. Are, like, I, I want to find out more about that mad scientist, like graphing stuff and you know composting and see what grows up. Or Well, like one year we had, um, uh, you've, you've probably seen those uh, viney, morning glory type blackish leaves yeah. uh, coming out of pots, people using the leaves. They're apparently kind of, of, of a sweet potato. And when I, we were cleaning out the pots in the fall, I was digging in the dirt, and my shovel, my trowel hit something, and there's this great big tuber. <laughs> and like the light, the light bulb over my head, oh my gosh, that is a sweet potato. Wow. So I did some research, because I didn't know they could grow in New England, and they can, but you can't eat the kind that, that you put in a decorative pot, because they, they don't really taste very good. Okay. So I spent a couple of years getting real sweet potatoes and growing them here. Oh, wow. And if you have a, a warm summer, which with climate 
change is, is coming our way. Everything's warm. Everything's warm. Yeah. They're not as happy as they would be in Georgia, but you can, you can get a few <laughs> meals out of them. I'm almost afraid to ask how you tell if you have a happy sweet potato or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a lot of reading. I took other people's <laughs> word for it. You, you won't get poisoned eating the ones out of the pots on the common, but they just, just don't they taste. They wouldn't poison you. They, they just, just don't taste, taste good. Bad. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Okay, S and Suzanne. I've also been in Burlington about 30 years. Okay. Um, I grew up on the North Shore. Okay. And when we started house hunting for our, our first house, our one-year house, we <laughs> found this cute little brown cape that looked a lot like the house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. It's not small anymore, and it's not brown anymore, but it's still in the same lot. <laughs> okay. So we, you know, put our roots down here. Oh, our excellent. children um, grew up here in Burlington, and now that uh, they're gone, I have a lot more time for gardening. Oh, I joined the garden okay. club because my neighbor um, next door was part of the garden club, and when I was, you know, and they had a trying beautiful to, lawn. And they beautiful had beautiful gardens, lawn, beautiful lawn but um, <laughs> when we, you know, I always trying to grow new flowers, okay. and she always had advice and extra flowers, um, and suggested I join the garden club. Excellent. Which I did, and when the children were in their busiest middle school years, I took a little hiatus, but then came back a few years back and picked right up where we left off. Excellent. So yeah. Sweet. So uh, tell me a little bit about the history of the Garden Club. You got, uh, Well, not you, but the Garden Club itself has been around for a while. Yeah, the Garden Club started in the 60s. I honestly can't remember the exact year. Uh, but we were talking, I was talking at our last meeting with um, a member who had been around in the early for a days. While. You know, we have um, our meetings where we have a program. Someone comes in maybe to talk about um, new planting last, last month we did, had someone that came in that was a landscape designer that talked about Ooh. design for homes, things to try as a homeowner. Uh, okay. You know, you look at beautiful <clears throat> landscapes where someone has plotted out every plant, mm -hmm. you know, front and back, but she had just small tips. Um, oh, one of the things okay. she, she mentioned was not having the green boa constrictor around the house, you know, the large hedges. <laughs> When we she, moved in, that's what I had. Yes, so lots of us have those, and you know they start every. All plants start little, yeah. but then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, now I do remember when we re-landscaped the front of our house. I told the landscaper, "I don't want to do anything, so put in the lowest maintenance stuff possible." Yeah, because our the prior owner, I think had a was, hobby of gardening and everything was well manicured and I'm just like I can't do this yeah so but yeah so we, we have you know the um, program people come in and do we do different programs oh, cool. and um, I lost my train of thought where do you guys meet oh we meet <laughs> we meet at the um, Council on Aging in the Kelly Murray room oh so we okay. meet on the fourth Thursday of each month Okay. Um, the middle of the winter, we do remote. That's one of the things with COVID. We did a lot of remote. Did okay. Zoom, you know? Got used to using Zoom, so we decided in those coldest, snowiest mm -hmm. months of of the winter that Zoom was really a good thing. Yeah. and it helps. Um, Sometimes you, you know, just don't want to. People don't want to get out, so well, we have lots of um, program and people that do the programs. There's a lot of um, presenters. And they've all gotten very comfortable with Zoom as well. So if they do a slide presentation, okay, it's very easy for them to do that on Zoom and have Absolutely. very much the same program from the comfort of home. It's helped our attendance. Too, it has it? helped our attendance. <laughs> Sweet, I you love know, it. Again, especially in the winter, yeah. and it, we meet at night, and a lot of the members are, are older, or have been around for a, you know have been part of the club for a long time, okay. and some of them don't drive anymore. But that was the point with the um, older, old, old, one of our senior members was telling us about um, how things have changed. And we have, you know, coffee pot, we do some, you know, refreshments. 
But she actually said they used, we, I mean, we always have called it tea. And I was like, why do we call it tea? Because we always <laughs> serve coffee. <laughs> but they used to actually have a silver tea set. Really? I mean, it was a ladies' garden club when it started. I was about to say that sounds very uh, stereotypical. It was, you know, and exactly. So we've come a long way. We now have several, several male uh, um, members. And our, it's very, our membership is very much more diverse now. Excellent. So it's, and our meetings are a lot more casual than silver tea sets would imply. <laughs> that works. And finicky flower arranging. We're much more of dirt digging oh, gardeners <laughs> than... So you're a garden club, not a floral club. Not a floral club. Okay. I don't think I sent it in, but I do have a, 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 a picture from the evening where everybody was making hyper tufa pots. Which is sort of like a cement a plus peat <laughs> moss plus, yeah. So they were they were using these plastic forms and slathering essentially mud all over the place, and there were tarps everywhere. And cement and mud. Yeah, they were concrete that plus. Fun. They were yeah, concrete you don't wanna... planter. Oh. But yeah, we made those ones. So we do lots of hands-on workshops okay. like that, where we really roll up our arms and our get sleeves dirty. and get dirty, um, and we. Usually in the winter time, we'll do some kind of uh, Christmas or holiday arrangement okay. with greens, an annual greens workshop. Um, How do you find either ideas or guests? Is it all just, hey, I know a guy, or are there resources available to you? There are actually a lot of resources. We're a member of the Massachusetts Federation of Garden Clubs, and they curate speakers from oh. all over and okay. present them so you know a lot of people that's you know they are master gardeners they are florists designers um, landscapers landscapers <laughs> they get really booked up and they get booked fast we actually had <laughs> we had a couple that they're master rosarians and they came and did they well they were one of our zoom meetings okay. this winter of um a trip to paris oh wow so they do both garden travel and then just travel as well. So okay. it was a little bit of seeing gardens. So you could, we said, sit in your, you know, armchair travel. Armchair travel. I love Which, it. With your tea or your coffee. The, or your wine. Or wine. whatever you wanted because <laughs> you were in the your beverage of choice. Your home. beverage of choice because you were home. Oh, yeah. So that was very nice. Maybe you zoom. So we had a lot of, you know, um, our ideas from that. Okay. Um, just in just from the membership, what would you like? What are you interested in this year? Okay. You know, what's you know, we do some homegrown programs too. We have things that we had trouble. You know, what's your trouble? What's your trouble spot this year? And everybody's like, ah, oh, I can't grow anything under that oak tree. I was about to and, say uh, groundhogs. <laughs> or I have a woodchuck problem. Woodchuck groundhog. Yeah. Uh, Same thing. Uh, whatever way you call it, they're. Nasty. Pests. They're pests, yeah. yes. They're cute, but they're pests. They are cute. They're very ravenous. I'm a little disappointed because I have some plantings around my mailbox, and some of them are tulips that come up every year, and they get to be about this high, and, so and then they have little teeth marks in them. Mm. Yeah. So I think our deer love. The bunnies like them as the well. The bunnies like them? Okay. We yes. have both in our yard. Yes, that's one of the you know the beauties of Burlington. We do have a lot of wildlife. Yes, we do. <laughs> but you do have you know there are some tips and tricks for for them. So and sometimes they just the idea is also just to plant something they don't like. That's true. And evidently, well, the tulips never, came with the house. So I, you know. I've I've never tried them, but I've been told tulips are very sweet. <laughs> okay, that's well, and it's dessert. You know why exactly. not? Exactly. Why eat the lettuce, if, you know, if there's dessert? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's also closer, you know, when they're coming out of the woods, you know, they just cross the street and it's right it's there. It's right there. You know, how can you resist? Exactly. Got to go way over there to get to the garden. Okay. Uh, on your website, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed your website. It was very informative. Your mission is gardening, conservation, and education. Can we take a few minutes and talk about each one of those? I think we kind of already talked about gardening, mm -hmm. but conservation chair over here, uh, how does what you do relate to conservation? It's very much the subject of the day. Um, 
as, as we are struggling with, as our towns everywhere, um, a lot of construction, a mm -hmm. lot of change for the wildlife. We are having warmer temperatures than we did probably 30 years mm -hmm. ago. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more wildlife than I ever did. Uh, back in the day, if we saw a deer every two or three years, it was an occasion to call all the neighbors and say, <laughs> there's a deer in Lou's yard. <laughs> and now they're all over the place. I actually, that would have been fun to, to send that in. But I, I actually have a video of, of this, they must be I don't it's know, baiting season. The, the motorcycle gangs of, oh. of they, they came up and they leaned against our <gasps> our bird feeder and it spilled on the ground and then they're like licking out of the hole. <laughs> oh like, man, you got a video of that? I do. <laughs> that is wild. That so there you know, we just have these hordes of, of animals coming in. Um, along with along with uh, the weather getting warmer, we also have hordes of new plants coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. That are that you never saw growing, you know, north of Connecticut, and now you see them up to New Hampshire. Um, are these that raises good plants a lot of, or bad plants? Both. I mean, oh. it, it raises. It, they're they're kind of on the fence. Uh, you know, if they're where you don't want them, then they're invasive. If they're if they're pushing out something you do want, then that's kind of a problem, mm -hmm. and. So I think that's why we're talking so much about native plants right now. Um, there, there's, there's really an upheaval with things coming in and, and things trying to keep a, a foothold okay. where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are several really bad inv invasives that are somehow, there's some, somewhat being spread by the construction. Oh, You know, people, okay. the construction crews will go in and they'll just you know, take down everything in the yard and mulch it all up. And if it's something like knotweed that can generate like a, literally a 50 foot vine from like a half inch node mm -hmm. over a couple of years, that can be a It'll disaster. Yeah. And then uh, there are invasive worms. Okay. I don't know if you've heard about the jumping worms. Jumping the last worms? Couple of years, no, that just <laughs> sounds like a horror movie waiting to be, you know, invasion it of the jumping does. worms. It truly does. It um, truly some, does. Some of these things, I, this is a little weird. But How do they jump? They don't have legs. <laughs> they, they're more like wiggle they're like springs. Wiggle okay. worms. <laughs> okay. Where a regular worm kind of just moves. Yeah. These, they thrash. Oh, and they wow. call them jumping. Oh, they're really okay. kind of scary. And they... Um, disrupt the soil whereas the even though our usual earthworms are not native here oh, they know. are um, helpful helpful to the soil okay. mm -hmm. whereas the jumping worms evidently I forget the biology part of it but they disrupt the soil oh, and okay. they disrupt mm -hmm. the, the the biome of the soil oh who knew so, so yeah do you have any advice what to do if we discover these jumping worms? <laughs> jumping worms now. They you say you can either like. you can drown them okay. or desiccate them, which okay. put them in the sun. Oh. So you, you fry them. You, yeah, okay. Essentially, you, you know, so you could put them in a bucket of water or you could put them in a empty bucket that they can't get out of oh. and leave them in the sun, which is actually the treatment for almost anything invasive. You know, oh, we use the word okay. invasive a lot. Like mm -hmm. Heidi said, you know, if it's crowding out something you want or if it's an aggressive plant, but true invasive plants are the ones that, there are plants that are actually illegal to sell. Mm -hmm. Oh, Like nurseries wow. are not allowed to, you know those beautiful burning bushes? Yeah. Be burning bush is very pretty in the fall, but it's very invasive. And people will say, uh -huh. But it's not a problem in my yard, and it's not the in your There's yard. A root system. It's it's the birds that eat their berries mm -hmm. and bring them to what to like Other. wetlands. Oh, and okay. they crowd out the na the native plants in the wetlands. Oh. That's where they're invasive. In your in your yard, they're not going to spread and take over and eat your house. They get very large. But it's not going to be a problem in your yard. Oh. And then the pear trees that every every shopping center put up like twenty years ago, twenty five yeah. years ago. 
there's a kind of pear tree, calorie pear, that um, was hybridized, and it, it was a lovely tree to put. Uh, Fast growth. You know, but yeah, very decorative. But it reverts to this really thorny, weedy thing and grows mm. like crazy and makes a thicket. And oh yeah. wow. Yeah. So that's where, you know, that's our part of our, con you know, conservation-wise oh, and, and okay. the, the knowledge about the, the, you know, plants that are truly invasive versus plants that are a nuisance. There are Those plants are that are a nuisance in your yard, like okay. if people like mint, people like you get a plant from a friend. Oh, I have so much of this. Won't, don't you want some? <laughs> and it grows and it takes over, you know, part of your lawn okay. or the... You know the peony smells, bush though. that you know okay. you, that was your grandmother's, and it it over you know it overruns it. <laughs> but it's not doing any harm, whereas a true invasive oh, is actually okay. harming the native habitat, oh. yeah, and it's it like crowds out thing, it crowds out uh, native plants. It also doesn't pr provide food for native wildlife. Oh. So there's, you know, there's a lot more to it. So we try and keep our members up on that sort of thing, share information, how to get rid of it. So that's, again, you know, the, so the invasive, you know, pulling them out and don't put them in compost. Don't put them in your <laughs> leaf bag because your leaf bags that you put out on the, okay. on the yeah. curb go to compost and they'll come back. So you really have to and they'll the come back to your yard. And they'll come back. The, keep, the gift that keeps on giving. Absolutely. So yeah, those are again the global perspective. Yeah. So it's the you know put it in the hot sun. Okay. Clear trash bag, hot sun for those nastiest of nasty weeds. Uh, okay. And that really that does kill them oh. eventually. <laughs> yes. Now before the show, you and I were talking about was it Heidi's project of the. Um, Native the garden native plant challenge. Oh, oh, the native, native garden over at the community at garden. The community garden. That's for something yeah, for the pollinators. That's something we started last year. Yeah. Um, Can we talk about that a yeah. little bit? It, I don't want to do. Definitely put in some uh, some muscle work there. Not to put you on the spot, but no, I'm putting no, you on the spot. I, I have pictures of you putting in a, a lot of muscle on that. Um, you fun. probably heard about endangered bees, bees being endangered, yes. and and so uh, if we lose our bees, we're going to lose our food. Yeah, pretty um, much. Yeah, so there's there's a community garden that Peter Coppola is our resident um, master gardener. We're very fortunate to have him here in town, and he's been kind of managed. He brought back uh, the community garden that had been started. What, in the 80s maybe? Mm. I'm not really sure. Okay. But he brought it back a few years ago, and it's been very timely. We really do have um, a fair number of, of, even though this is a very affluent town, we have a number of, of residents that really are food insecure. Okay. And with, with uh, the pandemic the last couple of years, oh, yeah, that definitely. was a problem too. Mm -hmm. The uh, community garden last year put out something like 1,500 pounds of food. Wow. I mean, okay, like and the, squash the community and garden, big, like it's, half it's of it is, or several years ago when I was involved, I, I rented a plot, but like half of it was just for people helping people's mm -hmm. food pantry. The other mm -hmm. half of it was you could lease a plot. Yes, and they still and do they that. that. Yep. They still do that. Okay, they still do that. So the recreation, the recreation department handles the rentals okay. of plots, and they have expanded the. Um, Victory Garden for people helping people. Oh wow! So the project with the uh, native plant garden was part of of that expansion. Oh okay. So we planted you know native plants for pollinators, mm -hmm. and it's right next to the the vegetable garden. Excellent. So it's it's um, so the bees the are bees that garden is attracting pollinators. So will hopefully benefit the oh, and increase. Okay. I don't know. I am a little shaky on. You know which pollinators pollinate which plants, but just getting more more pollinators right. into the vicinity Throw is going to there. help with yield. Oh, okay. So. And it's also the the pollinator garden is also meant to be an educational garden because that's a large part of the the mission of oh, okay. the community garden complex. Um, so we planted 
native plants in mass so people could see what they were. Oh, okay. And then we also planted seeds of all those same plants in to make a meadow so it was oh, more of a naturalistic okay. uh, that may we're hoping it'll come to fruition this spring um, because it was planted in the fall oh okay so, the, so it was seeded in the fall and it should be starting to come up and this year part of our work in the summer will be late putting in the labels so that people can walk through the garden and okay you know, learn See, a little bit more. See, that's the hardest part, you know, trying to identify. Okay, that one's a pink one. That was a pretty pink one, mm -hmm. and there's a pretty purple one, and that's still a lot of the way I like to garden. So <laughs> we're hopefully going to return some of the diversity that we used to have in, in the region. Mm -hmm. Just oh, backyard cool. by backyard. And exactly. Civic is project the, by civic project. Is the native slash pollinator garden just flowers or are there any like fruit producing it is uh, it is or? flowers i think that the saint john's wort i think is a bit of a fruit but i'm okay. not sure that you need it probably not um but it is all it is you know flowers okay. in that okay some of those some, some of those some of those plants are, are edible i I'm not, not going to go. I'm not a big them. flower eater okay. personally. He's he's putting some some food in. Yeah. I'm just curious because cool. like bees like flowers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as soon as you said the word meadow, it triggered a memory in me and again, I'm, you know, if I'm putting you on the spot and you don't want to answer this, we can just move mm -hmm. right along. But Mary Cummings Park just had like a a facelift mm -hmm. within the past couple of mm -hmm. years. And there's a sign there that there's supposed to be like a pollinator meadow. Mm -hmm. Is the Garden Club involved no. in that as all at all? We're That's not. trustee of reservations now. Yes. Okay. So when they came in, they they did a massive job of of getting rid of invasives. It was mm -hmm. being eaten alive by all kinds of invasives. Okay. So I wasn't sure if because yeah. I I know it's run and organized by the trustees, mm -hmm. but you guys are yeah. local? Yeah. <laughs> no, so, we have not been, been okay. involved in that. Um, but it is interesting that a lot of places do that. Like, if you drive up Route 93. Okay. With all, you know, the recent construction. Yes. And they have planted the median with wildflowers. So if, as you drive up in the oh, summer, it okay. changes. And it's reduced the amount that they mow. It has provided a um, a, cor a wildlife corridor, and it, it changes. It'll be you know um, lupins, and I'm not sure what kind of it's a it's a native sunflower. So it changes. It, it'll be all. Oh, I, I drive up cool. that way, and I, it'll be all blue one week, and three weeks later I go up, and it's all white flowers. Ooh, it, it's wow. Really, it's fabulous. Now, wait, who oversees this? Is it? That's, I'm, sh sh the highway department. Oh, yeah. cool. So, but then they only mow it in September. Okay. So, so like, it, it helps, you know, it helps with the amount they mow. It helps with, you know, the erosion because they're natives and they oh. hold on to the soil better. It's it really an, an interesting trend as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm weedy grass and you know having yeah. people out there mowing two three times and then all the pollen goes flying in the air and those poor people with seasonal allergies drive by and <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay i digress um you mentioned peter as a master gardener mm -hmm. what kinds of levels are there you know the the, the beginner who like I call myself the accidental gardener. I plant stuff to see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, may or may not do anything, but you know, there's got to be beginner or novice. And then, are there stages before you get to master? And what are those? Well, master gardener is an actual certification. Oh, okay. It's it's a classroom, and um, I'm not sure what the requirements are because I am not one <laughs> um, but master Gar the master gardener Association of Massachusetts runs 
the um, course okay. coursework and testing. Um, cool. And they are they have a um, volunteer requirement, so they're con they do conti oh, it's okay. continuous um, education and service. Okay. That is what you know make someone a master gardener oh, okay. um, and I think they do different tracks whether they be you know interested in floral gardening or you know um, growing your entire veg food vegetables chain. I think it's a little bit of everything oh, okay well I think so. the reason why what triggered that question was on your website there was like a contest for novice gardeners or beginner gardeners oh it's actually the and i'm thinking well how do you know if you're a beginner versus like an intermediate type person that has an unfair advantage against you know the accidental gardeners like me well thank you for actually asking that because mm -hmm. that does pose that we need to make some clarification okay the garden contest it's the third annual garden contest sponsor co-sponsored between the garden club and the recreation department okay um, recreation department um, approached us actually during the beginning of the pandemic looking for appropriate socially distant types of activities. Fun things to do. Fun things to do and, and they were looking for things for adults. Okay. Because they were working very hard with, for, with the kids but they were scratching their heads a bit on getting yeah. things for adults to okay. engage people. Um, so the contest is for amateur gardeners, meaning not professional gardeners. Oh, okay. So, and it was, you know, it's home, home gardeners. So if, okay. you know, if I happen to have a lovely flower garden, but I'm also a florist or a landscape architect, I wouldn't be eligible okay. to participate. So like Farmer Dave can't do this. Exactly. Got it. <laughs> so far, Farmer Dave would be ineligible, but other everybody else who lives in town and just but has, I love it, Farmer Dave, but he has just their own okay. has their, and he's not in Burlington, so it's That's Burlington true. residents. Okay. All right, and it you know amateur gardeners only, but it can be a, it is a small plot, okay. large plot, your entire yard. Can it be like container gardening? It can for be container gardening. Like so have separate have categories. Lawn. We have there. There's um, three. Three, three categories. categories of or actually four categories for adults. Okay. There's um, vegetable gardening. Okay. Flower gardening. Okay. There's porch patio gardening, which is meant for people who maybe live in an apartment and okay. only have a balcony. Okay. Some people are very creative growing everything on a balcony. Um, and a senior gardener, which is sixty five and older. Oh, okay. And last year we introduced a junior gardener. Ooh for um, grade school and middle school. Okay. And the winner of the, the adult gardening um, categories, they get a uh, one-year membership to the garden club. Cool. And the recreation department, the exact prize this year, I'm not sure, but it also will be a recreation a gift, a gift card or, you know, Ooh, so that okay. you can take recreation programs. Enter activity. and find out. Exactly. So for judging, you know, I remember, um, I don't know if the Science Center still does this, but for a while they had like little garden, um, well, not really garden that. competitions, but a sunflower competition. Mm -hmm. And yeah. who could grow the tallest and who can grow the biggest. And the biggest was based on like the center of the flower. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they had a tomato growing contest, and I think they had a cucumber growing yes, contest. And you had to bring yes, your cucumber, cucumber to the grocery uh, to, to the um, post office, and it had to have the official <laughs> post office stamp. So, how do you judge this? And then my next question will be: Are you involved in like when the science center does stuff like that? Well, the judging part is done by recreation oh, department. Oh, okay. So um, they will judge based on like, you know, the over, overall appearance, the the health of the oh, garden. So it's got to look good too. The oh. health of the garden, the design. Um, 
Like honestly, I forget some of so their it's criteria. Not like when you go to Topsfield Fair and see it's not based know, on the, like it's not a tomato biggest tomato. Uh, it's, it's the, the garden. garden. Oh, okay. Um, and but they do they also the entries are based on photographs. Oh. So you can photograph if you photographed your garden last year okay. and it looked lovely. Those are the pictures you want. Oh, so you don't have to so wait. So nobody shows up and says. It says, mm -hmm. oh, I just planted this yesterday and it's a twig. <laughs> but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Because that's okay. a little hard to, you know, yeah. go, it's the garden, con you know, conceptually, how to get the garden contest, like, rolling. It's like, well, in gardening is always about, you know, the hope for the, it's always, you know, okay. looking forward to the future. That's true. But if I open the contest in in May, in my garden, I planted a seed garden. There's not much to look no. at, <laughs> or to See have this the, dirt. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> yep. So until the woodchucks find it. <laughs> so it's based on photographs, and then they'll come. Oh, okay. And you, it, your garden might look different this year than it did last year, but the photographs give them an idea. The idea of what oh, okay. you have. So. Oh, okay. And they still do. They still are doing the the science center is still doing a contest with kids with elementary school kids. Oh, yes. okay. And we we provide um, we, we we sponsor we co-sponsor it. Um, we give a donation and Wendy Pavlicek buys whatever seeds and soil and oh, everything okay. that people that the kids need. Mm -hmm. Do you like serve any in in an advisory role saying this is the kind of tomatoes you want as opposed to that kind of no. tomatoes no all, she, all she's, on them. She's, oh i know wendy's okay. you she's, know wendy she, yeah. she's she's truly <laughs> got it together but she de definitely brings us re regales us with stories afterwards and brings us pictures mm -hmm. um and, and you know to, to she even has like a hydroponics lab and grows <laughs> great stories yeah. Yeah. about the kids and their excitement yeah they really get into the it. gardening cool with the pandemic and with the garden contest, it made me think of articles that I read where gardening is supposed to be really good for your mental health. Absolutely. Tell me more about that. It's all that keeps me insane sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have a woodchuck. Unless you have a woodchuck. <laughs> then that makes you insane. <laughs> Gives you focus. <laughs> I don't know about Heidi, but I find it's very therapeutic just to get outside, dig, dig in, in the, the dirt, dirt, and okay. let everything else go away. Um, it, you know, it's in that that you know that hope for something new, and it is always something new and different, um, even if you like you, sweet potatoes. But that's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. But and you can you can spend a little time or a lot of time out in your you know in your garden in your garden might be three pot you know three pots on your back stoop. I, it just you know it looks you know something to look nice mm -hmm. and you know kind of center you and a little bit of um, nature work. right it's right close. I it's, find coffee cups all over the place because I'll just go out just to see how things are doing. And like an hour and a half oh, later. Oh, like coffee I've, mugs, not, yeah. okay. An hour and a half later, I've come in and Where's my coffee? just time is gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did I do with my coffee? <laughs> Don't even think of it. <laughs> just <Yeah. laughs> Where's my mug? <laughs> yeah, I was I thinking did. like, you know, planting in the mugs, but no, that's a totally different, that's a different episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you no, do eat, you know, that, that, that vitamin, vitamin D is, is helped by the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D and sunshine makes good bones. Exactly. I heard something else about like their nutrients in the dirt that just like absorb. That's, I've heard that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not so I'm not so sure about that, but I'll I'll go, I'll go with it. And you where know? else can adults go and play in the dirt and not get in trouble? That's right. That's <laughs> right. I, I mean, when my, when my kids were little, that's I gave them a bucket, shovels, and some mud, and I could garden, and they played in the mud and. They had their spawn, I had mine, and we all had a great time. Yeah, I would take my daughter to the playground, and all she wanted to do was dig. Worm relocation. There you go. <laughs> my daughter was 
three, that was her favorite job. Wow. Dig up the worms really? from this side of the garden and plant them over there. Mm -hmm. So I had to do worm eviction. She did the relocation part. Yeah. But, okay, I digress again. There was also something on your website called the Go Native Challenge. Is that still around? Is it still an option? Can you tell me more about that? Sure. It is. It's, it's sponsored by the um, Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts. Um, and, and so they, they, they have this initiative. I'm going to have to read this right off my thing if you don't oh, mind. Oh, Go absolutely. Right um, because they say it so much better than I could. That's why we have notes. Yeah. <laughs> So the Go Native Challenge, the Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts has asked all member clubs to help to improve the environment for pollinators by doing the following. Support a more diverse habitat for native wildlife by promoting the uses of native plants on residential and civic properties. Mm. Encourage gardeners to work with nature, not against it. And educate garden club members and the public about the important role that native plants play in our ecosystem. Oh, okay. So is this like in addition to what you're doing over at the community garden? Yes. Or, oh, yeah. Okay. That, I mean, and that was that at the community garden was a big part of how our club participated. Individual members also. We had a couple of folks that tried to pull together our own, in, in you know, intramural, so to speak, oh, contest. Okay, there we where go. Where we got. Um, some native plant, new native plants. Everybody wanted, it, everyone who participated got something they'd never tried in their yard. Mm. Oh. Unfortunately, the plants we got were really tiny mm. little seedlings, and very few of us had success <laughs> with them. <laughs> but we all mm. compared notes, and those that got, the, you know, the, the same plants yeah. had the same problems because they were so young oh, when we, okay. we got them. I but there's a, a lot of thought went into it. Uh, they did. They was, it was fun, nonetheless. There's a very yeah. extensive list of, of approved native plants. Uh, there are a couple of places like um, the, the, I can't remember what they Garden called. in the Woods. Garden in the Woods uh, definitely is one. There's, there's, another, there's another organization that, has, um, that is, is sponsoring it and supplying the plants. Oh, um, okay. And they're asking, they're asking uh, the Garden Federation is asking all gardeners that belong to it to, you know, go out and get a few of them in the spirit, like that, mm -hmm. that you haven't grown before, preferably. Okay. And and just try to get them in place. Well, yeah, and I think in in theory, um, a native garden is a much less labor intensive garden because those plants they're supposed to be here. They're supposed to be here. You're not f trying to grow a tropical okay. plant that you know. Well, it's, you know, I got it's this beautiful plant and it made nice flowers, but come fall, it's, just, it's going to die or I'm going to have to do a lot of work to try and keep oh, it in my okay. house and bring it, you know, and bring it back cats. out next year. Uh, and, okay. you know, and that kind of plant is also expensive. That's so you true. don't want to spend $50, I don't want to spend $50 on a beautiful plant and then have it die in the fall. Yeah. That's true. I'm, um, you know. Yeah. I am but very conflicted though because um, a lot of the plants that we know and love are are I can't remember what they're called cultivars or nativars. They are brought over by by the colonists, so okay. they've been here for four hundred years. Um, it's it's really unrealistic to think that we could actually go all the way back no. before any of those plants, and and reestablish the natives that were here uh, okay. in the fifteen hundreds. Right, and. And I find that I, I, I really like a lot of our favorite garden plants don't belong here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm torn about that, and I'm torn about things like I really love coffee and I really love chocolate, and <laughs> those don't I do don't too well eat around here. All year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't want to eat turnips. Right. So, yeah. so we're trying to find a balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, but but there are there are websites that I follow where people are crazed about only having natives and only having specific cultivars of nat natives. Okay. No, that's mm -hmm. not a native at all, is it? Only having specific uh, true native that yeah, are in your really true, absolute right, reason. Yeah. Because a lot of people talk native plants when they say North America. Mm -hmm. And other people say, no, I only want something that is in the 
coastal Massachusetts right. native. So, okay. like everything, well, like North everything, still pretty big. yeah, and you the know. coastal Rhode Island plants are kind of walking their way up as it's yeah. getting warmer. So, but it, it's like everything. You can take yeah. it to what degree do you want to take it to? Got it. You know, so you have to try I, to just establish that balance. You know, are you vegetarian, vegan, or you know, do, you know, if it's the same same con concept oh, where okay. you know some people are you know they'll say I'm vegetarian but I eat fish, or oh, okay. you know, right. And some I, of the I, things that are getting established now, I think I think it works for knotweed, um, and I know it works for jumping worms. They, they uh, sequester heavy metals from the soil. So if there's a lot of contaminated soil, oh. that's, those are some of the things that are going to do okay. Right, okay. Yeah. So it's not like they're invading because of that. They're invading because that's... Because we we've we've ruined many. the soil. Yeah, it's one way. factor of many that yeah. is making it more difficult for oh, our natives. Okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, the jumping worms and the knotweed are saying... Okay. You don't like it. I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it looks delicious to me. <laughs> when you were talking about the challenge, mm -hmm. you were talking about the little seedlings. Can we discuss a little bit about pros and cons of planting seeds in your garden versus getting seedlings? Sure. Because I know you know, speaking from my very, very limited experience, every time I grow, try growing um, peppers from seed. I fail miserably, but I go to my local garden center, get them about three mm -hmm. inches high, boom, I'm set for the season. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the, it's, seeds versus plants is a little bit about, you know, that instant gratification. Okay. Can't, you know, oh, absolutely. When, do you, when do you want it? That's when why you start planting seeds if you want to have something right. show up in your garden. Well, and that's the uh, that's the other part of it okay. because you have to pay attention to where you are and what your growing season mm -hmm. is. Okay. How long does it take? And every plant is different, so you have to look at you know this the germination time on the seeds. Like pepper plants, tomato plants, they take a fairly long time mm -hmm. to get from their seed to the fruit we like okay. and we don't have the growing uh, season <laughs> to put tomato seeds okay. or pepper seeds outside by the time we're not worried about it being frost okay. or snow you know it's yes it's april 11th but we all have seen it snow and frost it and hailed at the election so yes exactly so you know, those tender plants that don't like the cold, you have to wait. So that's yeah. why, you know, those types of things, you are, be you know, you are best off buying the plant. Okay. Well, that's why they have those walled gardens in Europe, like starting a few hundred years ago, mm -hmm. because it created a, little, a warmer space. Oh, and when you oh. were growing your own food, three, two, three weeks of warmer weather in the beginning and the Absolutely. end of the season, could helps. could mean the, mm -hmm. could mean survival exactly right. the difference so. between starving and right. you know having yeah. something to eat yeah and so people who like to grow lots of people like to grow from seed because one of the benefits is you can get more variety mm -hmm. oh you know there okay. air you know you hear people talk about heirloom tomatoes yes the old tomatoes that you you're not going to get them at market basket okay when you go you know when you go and buy tomatoes you you know there's certain varieties of tomatoes that work well to be shipped and yeah. survive okay. and last on your Not counter what so you, the, need. <laughs> you know last on your counter from the you know right so that they taste from good when you the table there's, there's a longer longer right. period okay. of time so when you get seeds you can get the older varieties oh, or more specialized okay. varieties um, but in order to have them um, in your garden, you're going to need to start them inside, okay, where it's warm, and you know how how long you want, you know how far back, you know you want to start okay. that, and then you have to bring them <sighs> you out. You got to plan all of this too. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it is a lot of planning, and some people absolutely love that. Okay. Um, there are there are some libraries where you can they have like seed sharing um, clubs 
or they just have like seed libraries if you know you have to get like a packet of 50 and you need five mm -hmm. and people yeah. donate them Sometimes I do that with, you know, the packs of six of tomato plants. And I'm like, I just right. need six potatoes. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We have and a I small family, too, so we don't need that much. That's what one of the kinds of things from the club that we always say we want to do and need the... Plant the, explain. Uh, or uh, just seed leg like exchange. Exchange, exactly. Like, yeah. I'm going, I'm going to the nursery this week, and I'm going to get a six-pack of tomatoes. I want three. Yeah, because uh, like I like variety. Okay, but so I get three different kinds of tomatoes, right. and then I have three six packs. <laughs> and eighteen I, tomato plants is I, just yes, unless you're really good at yes. canning and exactly. <laughs> and when you squish them together, and they don't grow. And as then well, they don't grow as well, and then you're like you're, you're disappointed. So yeah. you know a little bit more. Maybe we should work on that this year. Yeah, maybe. I mean, heirlooms are supposed to be healthier, and they're supposed to uh, be better, better about maintaining diversity. Oh, okay. The the big agribusiness companies have done a lot of hybridization, mm. and um, it's... Because they're just in the mass produced yeah. of how to get stuff from garden to table mm -hmm. when you have, you mm -hmm. know, three weeks of time in between. Or right. And that does sort of create diversity, but I, I find you, you can't find the whole range of everything right. at right. any one time. You know, they'll, you go to the store to get your seeds, and there's two or three kinds of seeds, and the rest of them, they're not growing them this year. Yeah. So, Although I learned something get them online. very interesting that you guys are probably going to look at me going, yeah, and your point <laughs> is, I had tomato plants reseed themselves. Mm -hmm. Because, again, you know, I bought the six-pack and only needed one, but ended up planting all of them. And I'm the only one in my family that eats tomatoes. So by the end of the season, I'm just like, okay, I'm Tomato done. Out. My cherry tomatoes do that. <laughs> the next year, all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, I have an entire garden of, you know, I was giving away these seedlings. And I gave away 40 plants, and I still have, I'm like, where did these guys come from? So... I get so, I something happened. different every year does that in my garden. Oh, okay. Yeah. Last year it was potatoes. Color, yeah, you grew one color one year, and then it comes back the next year, and you didn't plant it. So mm -hmm. you're like. <laughs> Where did yeah. that come from? Yeah. Yes. Potatoes, but I don't think you ever can get all the little teeny. No, little you can't. Potatoes. And I always find, you know, I, I you know, practice the you know, old-fashioned crop rotation in the vegetable garden. Okay. One, because I. I like to design it too. I like to say, "Oh, I'm going to put this here," and I put flowers in my vegetable garden. Um, but so I'll last year. I all of a sudden, up in the middle of the tomatoes, there was a potato plant growing. <laughs> Don't I'm you like, love surprises? Where did you get that? How did you get <laughs> there? You're over there this year. Now, when that happens, can you transplant it, or you just have to like sometimes leave it there? you can. It's hard to do it with a potato unless you well, get it yeah. really young. Yeah. Sometimes I just say, there's plenty more over there, and yeah, that works and too. Throw it in the I always feel pile. so guilty though when I like thin out my garden. Yeah. I feel like I'm that's the other hard part about seeds. Oh, okay. It's hard to get over it. It's very hard, you know, but that's how you make them healthy, is yeah. to have them grow in the appropriate amount. I just feel space. so guilty about like. It's kind of like killing. children, you don't want to put 20. Yeah, I know. In, in, but... in one house, it's too many. <laughs> you need to spread them out. That's one thing I love about the, the community garden. He actually goes in with like a, a marked stick when you're when you're putting the seedlings in, and you know, put one here and one here and one there. You don't say I have a space this big I'm and I have eight in. plants and I. Yeah. <laughs> they're really that far apart, and then you know, at the end of the season, they have these great big thick stalks, and they're just bursting with health. Wow, cool. Yeah. I'm not patient enough. Okay, speaking of, you know, survival of the fittest and <laughs> thinning and everything, I want to take the other approach about pesticides and herbicides and what can be done to take a more natural approach mm -hmm. to getting rid of some of the pests that will eat your plants. Any advice? I think number one thing is not all bugs are bad. Okay. So, and very few bug sprays are selective. 
So there are certain um, old remedies that work. Okay. Um, and also, like with in vegetable gardens, is planting compatible plants, okay. or pl there are certain like plants that, um, like aphids are common pest in the in the garden, but there's flowers like nestorums that attract them. So they'll go to those flowers okay. and not bother the flower oh. instead of bothering your tomato plants. Oh, okay. I was thinking you're so, saying, hey, look, over no, here. And well, then they just come and they're already in your garden. But Well, you, you know, you say it comes up over here. And now you'll leave my other things alone. Well, for the community garden, Peter feels really strongly about building up your soil and yes. having okay. healthy soil. Um, I asked him, every time anybody asks him about this bug or that bug or whatever, he says, first off, get your soil where it should be and you won't have that much of a problem. Mm -hmm. But he does occasionally, like we have bean beetles and things like that. And he, oh my he uses, gosh, I guess, one year at the, when we had the community garden, there was this thing, it looked like a stink bug, but it was on my zucchini plants and mm. oh my gosh, they were ugly and they like killed everything. Mm. Yeah, the bean things, they look like, like little aliens they are yellow spiky things it looks Ew. like it looks like half of a yellow covid oh <laughs> weird okay <laughs> so um so it, they sort of say pick them off which is disgusting because they squish in your hands and <laughs> but um and, and you can't be there all night you know? right so that's a good thing to do but uh, i guess you would say he uses integrated pest control Okay. He uses a little bit of something of the, like, the least harmful thing he can use. He uses something called neem oil, which is derived from a, a plant. Um, I think he might also use something that comes from a pyrethrin. is like a, it looks like a mum kind of a plant. And okay. that plant puts out a, a class called pyrethrins. He uses those, I think, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know and I've just soaked to make it to make it stick and you can spread it out oh, yeah. okay. there's, a, there's several of home remedies okay. of you know pepper and dish soap and I'm trying to remember some of the mm -hmm. things I've tried um, I'm not sure how successful they were Don't and they all get washed off and in the they rain, get washed away so, so you have to it, be really persistent there are certain bugs that you know you just know that when it's time that, that you know that you can't get rid of them but oh, okay. that's one, you know, if you're planting vegetables, you plant more. <laughs> there you go. You make a bigger garden. Okay, we okay. only have a few minutes left, but I noticed on your website that you have some upcoming fundraisers, like a comedy night, maybe? Oh, well, the comedy, it, comedy night is actually just our next um, meeting. Oh, okay. Uh, which uh, the public is invited to, you know, our meetings are open, um, and we're having a... Um, a presenter who I we presented him as you know comedy in the garden and he said you know, um, was it gardening will it won't hurt you and other lies we tell ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> um, his name's Neil Sanders and he is the husband of one of the um, Federation. Oh, um, okay. she sure. was past president of the, of the Mass okay. Federation and she does a. a a lot of gardening, and he basically pro proclaims that he carries the shovel and moves the heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. She's the gardener, but he, you know, okay. he's the muscle, okay. um, and he's a writer, and he just tells, you know, basically jokes that, jokes that gardeners will get. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so he's a lot of fun, and, and anyone's welcome to come join us. On and that. when is that? That is the last Thursday of April. At 7 p.m., our is that the 24th? I, think it I, I forget the date. Look it up on the website. <laughs> yeah. But guess what, ladies? We're out of time. Well, thank you so for having us. Very fast. Thank you so much for coming. I love you know talking about dirt and bugs and you know flowers <laughs> and everything. That was a lot of fun. Um, but I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in. I hope that you are looking forward to springtime and getting out and playing in the dirt as much as I am now. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful week, wonderful weekend. Have a safe and happy springtime, and I'll see you around town. Good night.